Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hi guys, welcome to week five of Beauty Bootcamp. Today is all about the eyes. And this is kind of what everybody's been waiting for. It's the funnest part when it comes to makeup is being able to do eyeshadow. Eyeshadow is really where our creativity lies, where you really get to have fun with colors. Today, we're not working with colors, unfortunately. <laughs> that is for next week. What I wanna teach you today is how to apply your eyeshadow in three simple steps. It really is that easy. We are gonna be using neutrals today. Neutrals is a safe space for a lot of people, especially when you are just starting out in makeup. Neutrals are just people, it's like home, right? So that's what we're gonna start with today. I am using the Light to Medium Neutral Palette by Limelight by Alcone. And I love it because it does have the perfect like neutrals that will are gonna go with a, a wide range of makeup looks. So all you're gonna need for this is going to be three shades. Any shade colors that you want, but you want to have a light, a medium, and a dark. So we're gonna be using these three colors right here. You can have them matte, you can have them shimmer, really it's up to you. I'm gonna teach you kind of how I use them and what I prefer where, but really it's gonna depend on you. And you, like I said, you can do this with all sorts of colors, right? Okay, so the first thing's gonna be doing is prepping our eyes. Okay, prepping our eyes is very important because for one, it is going to neutralize the colors on your eyelids. A lot of times, I right now have foundation on my eyelids, so it's a little harder to tell, but normally they are a lot, lot darker. When they are darker, just naturally, then it is actually going to cause your eyeshadows to appear different. It's going to kind of change the look of them because it's kind of feeding off of that color that's on your eyes. Another thing that it's going to do is it is once you have something on your eyes, it's going to help your eyeshadows last longer. You can do this with an eyeshadow primer or what I like to use depending on your concealer. So I use the concealer by Limelight. It is perfect because it doubles as an eye primer, right? So you want something that's a little bit tacky that is going to grip onto the eyeshadow and it's going to make it last longer. So for this, I am going to use just a little brush. This is a Limelight 05 and I'm going to just dip into here and then I'm just going to lightly put it on my lids. I like to use a brush for this because I don't want it to be a ton of product on my lids. If I go into my finger, I can get too much. It can just, it can weigh it down. It can get cakey. That's when it really starts being just way too much. So a brush, something like this, even a concealer brush is going to be great for applying it because it is going to apply it and be able to get a soft application with it. Okay, so now that we have our primer on, our concealer on, just take a either a really neutral colored eyeshadow or this is a translucent powder. I'm taking it on a brush and I'm just going to kind of tap it on there. What it's going to do is it's going to set that primer, that concealer in place. So then you aren't going to get any creasing, anything like that right there. You still want it to be tacky. Okay, so this is where this kind of comes into play. You don't wanna to put too much powder, but you don't wanna to put too little. If you put too much powder, then it actually can really grip. When you have a cream and you have a powder, a lot of times that powder can grab on, it can skip, it just does not blend out nicely. So if you have too much powder, then it, it doesn't have any grip at all. So it's kind of finding that balance that kind of is the best of both worlds. Now to tell you exactly what that is, it's hard because it's different for every person. It's all about just playing with it, kind of, you know, testing it out and you'll find that sweet spot that's best for you because everybody's is a little bit different. Okay, so let's go into a little bit of the anatomy of the eye. A lot of times you hear influencers and they're telling you, oh, put this in the transition area or put it into your crease, put it into your outer V. What are those things? They never explain to you where these, these are, right? You just kind of have to know where they are, but a lot of times we have no idea. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of anatomy with you here. So you're gonna take, and you, I want you guys to be doing this right along with me, take the end of your makeup brush. We're gonna be very gentle with this, but you're gonna be able to feel everywhere where that is. So we're gonna start right here with the brow. This is obviously your brow, right? Right underneath it, that is your brow bone. You can feel it, it is your brow bones, right underneath your brow. 
We're going to keep following it down. You can feel your orbital. Okay, your orbital, if you have ever looked at a skull, it is just the eye part of it. It's the, the, it is the bone part of the, the skull itself. Okay, so that is your orbital bone. It completely goes around your eye. Okay, again, we're being very gentle. This is our eye area, right? So we're being very gentle, but you can feel it going all the way around. Okay, that is obviously your orbital. Okay, right there, right about where that ridge is, just right on top of that ridge, that is actually your transition area. Okay, that's where, when I say transition area, that's exactly where you're going to put that transition shape. Right underneath it, right, that little space between your eyeball and your orbital bone, that is your natural crease. I say natural crease because Again, like I've said through the whole entire thing, your bone structure doesn't change, your skin does. So as we get older, our skin starts to sag. It starts to kind of be a little bit more droopy, right? So your crease actually could change, like your physical can change, but your true crease never changes because your bone structure never crease changes. Always go with your bone structure, not your skin structure. Okay, so we have our crease right there, again, right in between that. Now, there's actually a little pocket. I'm not pushing. Okay, this is very gentle. Okay, from there, we have the lid itself. Okay, that is in everywhere from the lash line all the way up to our crease. That is your lid. Now, we can break down the lid into further sections. Okay, we have the inner lid, which is about the inner third. We have the middle lid, which is that middle part. And then we have our outer third, which is the outer lid. Okay, so just break it up into thirds. From there, this is where we go into that outer V. Okay, if we actually take a line and we connect from our lash line up onto our transition area, across our crease, that makes a V. Now, it is not a V looking this way, it is a V going this way, okay? That is your outer V. So whenever somebody says that, now you now know where that is. From there, of course, like I said, we have our lash line, which is pretty self-explanatory, just follows that, right? Then we have our lower lid, okay? Believe it or not, you have two lids, okay? We have our eyeball, and then we have lids over top of it, and both of those lids come together to when you blink. That's why we all have lines underneath our eyes. It's human, guys, okay? It's because we need that excess skin because it makes up our lower lid. And we can obviously break that up into three as well. And then we also have our lash line right in here. That line right there inside, you know, the, the line between our lashes and our eyeball, that is our water line, okay? And then right in here, this is our tear duct, okay? Or our inner, inner tear duct, okay? So those are the anatomy of the eye. Knowing the anatomy of your eye is important when it comes to makeup, where to place it, and just basically just knowing the lingo that everybody uses but never really tells you what they're talking about. From here, we are going to go in with our colors, okay? Again, like I said, we you need a light, a medium, and a dark. Don't care what colors you use, just as long as you have those. I could also do something like this. It really depends on how sultry you're looking for or just, just really what you're looking for and play with it, guys, okay? I am gonna start with this color right here. Now, this is a shimmer shade. If I wanted to go with a matte, I would go with more like this matte, but I am going with, an, with a shimmer. Now for this one, I'm actually gonna use my finger. I'm just gonna use my ring finger. Your ring finger and your middle finger have the least amount of pressure. So whenever you're working with your hands on your eyes, always make sure, for one, that they're clean, but also make sure that you are using these two fingers because they do have the lightest amount of pressure. So I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna take this all across my lid. Sometimes I do really like to use my fingers for an eyeshadow look because really I just like it with makeup in general because it does help the product melt into your skin. It brings it up to, to your body temperature so it just goes on beautifully and it also saves time, right? So I'm just going to kind of gently 
place that over here. Now, if you wanted to use a brush, you absolutely could. I would use a flat brush if you are using a shimmer. It's just gonna make that shimmer just pop. All right, so from here, you have your light shade. We're gonna go in with your medium color. Okay, now where you hold, this is where it's gonna come into effect where you hold your brush. Okay, I always hold it in the middle here. It's gonna give you nice control of the brush. If you hold it right up here, then you are gonna get a lot of product all really fast, okay? Because it's going to be harsh because you're using a lot of pressure on there. If you have it back here, and sometimes I will, if I want just a light wash, I will hold it back here and that's gonna give you that light wash because you're using light pressure. For me, a lot of times I hold it just like a pencil, right here in the middle and that's just going to give you kind of the best of both worlds but also give you a lot of control over that brush so i'm going to go into my medium shade always tap off the excess if you don't that's a lot of times why you have fallout on your eyes and i'm going to put this right in my transition shade i am going to just look either into the camera okay that because that is going to where i'm seeing I am seeing what's going to be seen when my eyes are open. A lot of times people will go like this, especially when they're learning how to do makeup. They'll do their with their eyes closed. And when you do that, you open up your eyes, you lose all of that color because it's in your crease. When you actually apply it with your eyes open, I'm kind of squinting a little bit so I can see more of that area. You can even tilt your head back. Okay, but what I want to do is I just want to do windshield wiper motions. Okay, right in that transition area, but with my eyes open, I can see right where that is being placed. So when I open up my eyes completely, I can still see it because I, I applied it with that. If you have hooded eyes, this is going to be key to being able to see your makeup look and it not being hidden. Now, something that I like to do is I like to take my transition shade and I like to put it right here underneath on my lower lash line. Okay, what this is going to do is it's really just going to continue the look down underneath your eyes. Some color, some eye looks you might not want to do this with, but a lot of the looks that I do, I actually prefer to do this with because it just ends up finishing the look. And then you can also bring it to a connect up at the corner. So see how that is it, it's not very bright it's not in your face but it's there okay it's just gonna help tie everything together now something i didn't mention is when you are working with your transition shade you want to have something that's nice and fluffy when it comes to your brush okay the fluffiness the fluffier it is the more diffused the color is so the softer the color is okay that's why i really like it for your transition shade because your transition shade is something that is similar to your skin tone because it's just going to help everything kind of blend together and just kind of act like it's just it's a gradual gradient from one color to another that's really what that transition shade is going to to act as okay so you want a fluffy brush for that now when you're going into more defined areas so like we're going to be going into our outer v with that darker color i maybe want something that is not as fluffy a little bit more compact a little bit smaller depending on the area that you're working for so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go into that darker shade dip in there again hit off any excess and then you are going to go right in your v what i like to do is i like to draw a line up and over and you see that v that is the v that i'm talking about okay from here i like i can do small circular motions just to kind of help diffuse it out okay and i know you're thinking okay that's still a little intense right okay that's okay we're gonna keep this brush that we did our transition shade with handy because this is going to help us blend it together blending is so important when it comes to eyeshadows because it is what kind of acts as that gradient it's what kind of makes everything come together all of those those pictures you see on instagram on pinterest that just are gorgeous and just looks like the colors are melting from one color to the next it's all because of blending because i do have semi-hooded eyes meaning that the hood of my eye here comes over the top of my lid. I want to bring this up a little bit further than my 
actual crease itself. What that's going to do is it's going to make my appear my eyes appear lifted. It just kind of gives them a bigger shape. It just makes them look like I have more lit space than what I really do. Then I'm going to take that brush that we use for a transition shade and just go right on top of it. I haven't added anything to this. It is just what is left over and I'm doing windshield wiper motions as well as little tiny circles. Okay, I want to start small with my colors and build up. It is so much easier to build up than it is to like try and blend out way too much product. It is just easier to keep adding more. So I'm gonna go back in and just keep building it up until it is the darkness that you want. Okay, we're just gonna keep building up. You can even move it in to more of just your outer third if you would like. Just really play with it and just make it your own. If you do get a little too dark here, which absolutely can happen, go back into your transition shade and just bring it over right where you went a little too dark. You can even blend it out with your finger. Again, your fingers make amazing tools because they do help warm up the product so it just blends beautifully together and it just kind of brings it down a little bit. See how much that did just by using my finger to help warm it up, help it just melt into the skin a little bit more. It helped really soften up that darkness that was happening right there. When you're doing your eyes, always take a step back to look at, in the mirror at both of your eyes. A lot of times we get tunnel vision where we are focused so much on one eye that we don't realize that maybe we've gotten a little heavy handed or we've kind of gotten all over the place with one eye versus the other eye. A lot of times I happen to get heavy handed on my second eye versus on my first eye. I think the first eye, I'm just kind of getting the hang of it. I'm not really sure what I'm wanting in terms of looks. And so I'm kind of just gently going in there. But with the second eye, I'm like, oh, I know what I'm doing. This is the look I'm going for. And sometimes I can get heavy handed. So what I want you to do is take a moment to take a step back, look at both eyes, make sure that they match. If you've gotten heavy handed on one eye, either try blending it out a little bit more or going to the other eye and adding a little bit more on. Okay, being able to see both eyes and not get that tunnel vision and make sure that they are similar is very important. Okay, we're gonna still take that dark color on the same brush and I am just going to bring it on my lower third, okay? This is where knowing that terminology is important. Okay, we're gonna bring it into that lower third and then just bring it up so it connects into that upper dark color. And there you have it, our basic eye. Okay guys, like I said, this is super easy. Again, it's just using those three colors to get the placement. From here, I would add on mascara. We're not onto that yet, but you can absolutely, to finish, finish off the look, you can just add on mascara. Um, if you wanna add on some liner, you absolutely can. Now, I wanna kinda of take some note of why I placed what where. Lighter color is on my inner eye. What this is gonna do is it's gonna keep my eyes still looking big and bright. It's not gonna close them off. If you start adding dark color to the inner, it's going to bring your eyes together, but it's also gonna make them smaller. By having them light, it's gonna keep them big and bright. Okay, the darkness here is on the outer because it's going to actually make your eyes appear lifted as well as that, that almond shape that everybody kind of strives to go for. So that's why I have placed them where I have. It's just gonna kind of give your eyes an illusion of that, okay? But it, again, always make sure you keep the inner nice and bright. If it is kind of, because shadows attract shadows, right? So sometimes that dark can take over and it can kind of make the light go away. So if that happens, just take a little bit of that light and just press it on that area that you had before. And it's just gonna refresh that brightness. It's just gonna make it bright again because it's gonna cover up that darkness. All right, guys, homework time. Yes, I popped on some mascara so you can see it final and it's all its glory. Mascara makes a huge difference, just saying. So never skip on the mascara. Okay, homework. I want you to recreate this look. You don't have to use the same colors I did, but I want you to really practice the placement. So just pick a light, pick a medium, and pick a dark shade. 
You can absolutely, if you want to go color, if that is your jam, go color. Just try and kind of stick with light colors, a medium color, and a dark color. We're going to go all into color theory and working with colors next week. But if you absolutely want to start playing with color, go for it. Um, but I really want you to start working with the placement. Just kind of go with the same steps that I did. Put them in the same spots um, until you get comfortable. Work on that blending. If there is something that you're kind of, if it's just looking kind of patchy, if it's kind of looking a little muddy or just isn't looking right, go back and rewatch this and really study and break it down. And of course, if you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to help you. Um, but I want you really to work on the placement. This, like I said, this is the basic. This is my eyeshadow, my three, my eyeshadow three. Okay. Again, it is the very basics. Once you master eyeshadows three, then you're going to be able to really apply any look that you want to, uh, to do. For the most part, you're going to get a great everyday eye and it's going to have de definition. It's not going to be just one color that I know a lot of people do. The second thing is we are going to start going into color theory and I want you guys to kind of practice blending okay again like I said blending is number one blending is so important I'm gonna take these babies out of my hair here blending is so important and so the best way to practice your blending is actually to work with color because neutrals are neutral for a reason they kind of work together it makes blending easy but next week when we actually go into color I want you guys to be able to blend seamlessly without kind of getting scared or, you know, the work, that's when colors can really go wonky. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to pick two complementary colors. Okay, so look at a color wheel, pick two complementary colors because that's where things can go crazy. Okay, so whether that be green and red, that be blue and orange, that be purple and yellow, whatever it is, pick two complementary colors and you're going to blend them together. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to take a red. This is kind of, it's not red, red, but this is a red. And then I am going to take a green. Okay, so those are complementary to each other. Okay, so they're going to make each other pop, but they also can go crazy. Okay, when you mix two complementary colors together, that's when you get brown. Okay, so we don't want to kind of go a little crazy with that because it can go crazy. That's when it can get real muddy on you. So what I want you to do, this is what we're going to go for. I want you to take your arm, okay? You're going to go into one color, tap off that, and I want you to gently holding it, okay? We want this to be soft, okay? And I want you to just kind of go over it. Okay, uh, it always looks weird, but I want you to keep going over it and building it up and we're going to actually blend the two together. Once you have the one color, you're going to go in with a new brush. You're going to dip into the second color and we're going to go the opposite direction. Okay, we're going to slowly start blending that out. Okay, so if you notice, look right here. I have more concentrated here than I do here. We need to work on bringing those together and blending it out by adding just a little bit more. And that way you're bl you're kind of blending it together where it is one kind of gradient. Once it actually reaches that, comp that other complementary color to it, that's where you really need to really focus on not making it muddy. Okay, muddy is when it just, it doesn't go into each other beautifully. It just gets really, it's like a poop brown. Okay, it's not even a pretty brown. Now you can get a pretty brown out of it by blending it together. Okay, but I want you to work on that. Okay, that is what I want you to work on is just blending it together. If you notice that it is kind of going a little stray, just kind of Figure out what you need to do. Do you need to add more of one color? Do you need to add less of another? Do you need to just fix your hand placement? That is really what it comes down to. There is a sweet spot in blending them together where they go in beautifully, okay? Where they don't get muddy, where they kind of are happy together. There is a sweet spot. And I want you guys to figure out whatever that is. 
Okay, I did a little bit more blending and you can see that it seamlessly goes in. There's not a harsh line. That's what you want. So that's what you wanna practice is blending those two complementary colors together. And that is what we're looking for. That is part of your homework for this All week. All right, so there you have it. There is your homework and there is the techniques that I want you to practice. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. If you are not caught up on the weeks, then please go back in and watch them. That way you get caught up. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm always here to help. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys all next week. Bye, guys.